Greetings to you all in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Such a privilege and I thank the pastor for giving me this opportunity and I'm more 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 and more thankful to God um for going to be using me today as we meditate on the portion from the word of God. Um as we are in the Lenten season we are meditating on the topic of cross that's going to be the central theme but at the same time we are also seeing the letter of paul to the romans today we're going to be meditating on just one verse which is found in romans chapter 1 verse 4 let me just read for uh, for all of us beginning from verse 1 to kind of have the context of this verse romans chapter 1 verse 1 Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our lord shall we look to the lord in prayer Heavenly Father we thank you for this time. As we look into your word we ask you that you will guide us. Lord open us our hearts so that you will hope you will fill it with your word. Let your word dwell in us richly Lord. Let the words of my mouth the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O Lord. our strength and our redeemer amen the topic that we are looking at today is the spirit of holiness who is the spirit of holiness the spirit of holiness is a term that's been used to describe the holy spirit holy spirit is nothing but the third person in the trinity i'm sure we all know this but why do we call the spirit of holiness Why does Paul talk about the spirit of holiness rather than just a holy spirit in this particular verse because it's through the power of this holy spirit that we are made holy all of us all of us sitting here who are washed by the blood of the lamb who have accepted Jesus as the personal savior who has been focusing on the faith journey all of us you know have been really having the holy spirit the moment you have jesus as your personal savior you already have the holy spirit coming and being within us that's the part of holy spirit and um, through the power of the holy spirit through the power of the holy spirit we are sanctified with christ we are tra- sanctified and we are transformed into the image of Christ. And that is the purpose for which God sent his own son Jesus Christ to this world so that we are redeemed, we are sanctified and we can be closer closer having a closer image of Christ. And this is how can we we do how can we go through that? It is through the power of the Holy Spirit. it is through the holy spirit that we that jesus was raised again on the third day the same holy spirit was the power behind the resurrection of jesus and that is the same holy spirit that is in us today that is in us today who helps us in terms of our journey who helps us to overcome sin who helps us to overcome death who helps us to become more like jesus as believers we need to really have a clear understanding of this holy spirit it is not an impersonal um force people think it is like you know a third somebody third person a spirit which is you know loitering around no 
Holy Spirit is a very personal who has emotions, who has a will, who has ability to communicate. Holy Spirit is not a person or a, not, a, not a super force that is outside, but it is a Holy Spirit is within us, who helps us in terms of communicating with God, who demonstrates the power of God in us. Holy Spirit is always dwelling and f- dwelling within us. When we allow the spirit of holiness to lead us, I'm pretty sure that he will guide us. He will walk, help us walk into all spiritual truth. Not only that, he will also empower us and to lead a victorious life. I'm sure with that particular introduction, we just want, I want to kind of take us through um, a few thoughts of living a holy life. How do we do that? It's very, very important to live a life with the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And I think without that, it is very difficult. We see that in John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus talks to his disciple about the helper who is going to be coming after Jesus leaves the world. This helper is going to kind of bring into remembrance all that Jesus has taught them. This Holy Spirit is going to kind of help them in their journeys after Jesus. So disciples have been already told about that. And it is also not just for that particular disciples on those days, but it is also applicable for us today. How do we overcome sin? How do we overcome the death? How do we live a victorious life? How do we kind of, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to help us? The first point that I wanted to make was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Holiness is the power of God. The Spirit of Holiness is the power of God. And I think it is only through the Holy Spirit we are able to experience the power of God in our lives. We definitely need that power. We definitely need that energy. We definitely need that extra help for us to lead a victorious life. The world is full of challenges. I'm pretty sure that like, you know, each and every one of us have a lot of issues to face, have a lot of challenges to face in our workplace, in our families. There are immense of, there's so much of trouble, there's so much of suffering that we go through, but it is not just going to be alone. You know, we're not going to be alone in this world. The Holy Spirit's power is going to kind of embrace us. And for that, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables us to lead a victorious life. Romans 8 verse 11 says, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit lives in us and gives us life. And I think we need to receive this power. I need, we need to receive this Holy Spirit, which can help us to kind of really overcome sin and get closer, go closer to God. So the first one is Holy Spirit helps us in, to kind of get closer to the power of God. The second point would be the spirit of holiness is not only the power of God, but it's also the presence of God. You don't only draw the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, but you need the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. And as I had already mentioned, the moment we accept Jesus, the moment we become believers of Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives within us. And it means that the presence of God is always with us. And we have the access to the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You know, that is very important for us. As humans, we are limited with a lot of wisdom. Unless we are filled with the wisdom of God, unless we are filled with the guidance of the Lord, it is very difficult for us to lead a life, a victorious life. So the Holy Spirit helps us to be with us, helps us or uh, helps us to kind of have the access to the wisdom and the guidance of God. 
in, in John 14, 16, like it says, Jesus promised that he would be with us always. And being with is very, very important. It is not just, uh, not just kind of knowing who God is. Not just knowing who Holy Spirit is. But more and more important, whatever, more than that, we need to be with him. We need to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So the power of God. And the second one is the presence of God. And as believers, we take comfort that we are not alone. We are not alone. We have the Holy Spirit within us to guide us, to, to kind of really encourage us. And that is what the Holy Spirit does. The power of God, the presence of God, and finally, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Holiness is the source of holiness. He is the source. Be holy as I am holy. You know, Jesus said that. In fact, the, the, the author of the letter to the Romans, he says that. Follow me as I follow Christ. It's not a very easy terminology that for us to say to another person. It needs a lot of courage. It needs a lot of energy for us to say that. Holiness is so crucial to be in the presence of God. We, when we are in the presence of God, we ought to be holy. and That is a, a, a greatest quality that is expected of us by God. We are called to live a holy life. We are called to be holy. As we see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, we are called to be holy because God is holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. He is the God and we need, to be, we need to be in the image of God. God has created us in the image of God and God expects us to be having his quality. And I think once when we have those, that holiness, it's very, very important. We will have the wisdom, we will have the guidance, we will have the power to live a victorious life, to live a life that is actually according to the standards of God. Standards of God is really at a very high level. The world has a different level of standards. A biblical worldview is completely different from the, the, the other worldly worldview. Worldly, world, world, worldly view actually talks more about like, you know, yeah, help a person. Just that, yeah, you need to be kind to a person. Worldview says that like, you know, if you kill a person, you are committing a sin or you're committing a big mistake. The, the, the word of God, the biblical view is taking us to a completely different level of saying if you hate a person in your heart, you're committing a murder. So it's not easy for us to live a life that is up to the standards of God. And for that, we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us to live a standard, a life that is up to the standard of God. Your beloved, this during this time of Lent, let us think about us, let, let us introspect in our hearts about do we have the power of God? Do we have the presence of God? Do we have the source of holiness? All of this is combined in the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit the third person in Trinity. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for helping us to meditate on the spirit of holiness. Thank you that you are there with us in this world. We are not alone. We've been thinking that, Lord, that how are we going to be dealing with certain issues? in our family, in our, in, our, in our workplaces. But Lord, we thank you for the assurance this evening that we have received that the Holy Spirit is one who gives us the power of God, who gives us the presence of God and also who helps us to lead a life that is holy. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you this evening that you will once again 
come into us lord we remember the words revelation 320 that you are standing at the door and knocking for you to come inside and we are op- today lord want to open our hearts to do you and we want to kind of bring you in our in, in our hearts so that you would lead us you would guide us you would give us the wisdom that we need lord you would give us the strength that we need to overcome sin overcome the temptations of the world and i pray that lord that you would guide us to lead a victorious life lord we thank you for the holy spirit we thank you that you have guided us this evening lord we thank you and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen